thank you to everyone at Digital Hub for welcoming us here today and for all your help in setting up and getting everything organised for us. It's a fantastic venue and we're delighted to be uh, partnering with you um, on this event today. Just Eat is the number one um, online uh, delivery service in Ireland and in, indeed we are in, uh, globally at the moment. It's about community. Our vision is to create the world's largest food community um, and hand in hand like that I think it's really important to be working with people like yourselves um, and also you know with the likes of uh, the panellists just to highlight how tech is, is I mean moving the industry forward not just for us but for others. It's definitely uh, fairly big because if you think about it, what machine learning does is really is extracts the value of data, right? So it's only as good as what data do you have. And if you look at Just Eat, we have 60,000 restaurants across the world and we do millions of transactions uh, every month and almost every, week, every weekend as well. So th that wealth of information that as an aggregator we see is unique, right? Only, only we have it. And then when you aggregate that data, you can use machine learning to predict what's going to happen. So the, the way we want to help restaurants to grow is by, uh, when we aggregate that information, be able to tell them what actions they could take mm -hmm. that will grow their business. That's one of the three big pillars that we have, how we're going to grow the restaurants. So a lot of the tools that we have now on the order pad, which is our, our platform for, uh, for restaurants, is to bring all that uh, wealth of data for them so they can take actions. For example, we can tell you if you uh, uh, change the, the perimeter of your deliveries and add these three blocks, you will do hundred more orders that night uh, and we can predict that with almost a frightening level of accuracy uh, because the data of course that we have is, is so vast mm. uh, and that could apply to almost any aspect of their business right so we can tell them about the, uh, the hours they're opening mm. if they open one hour earlier how much business they could do if they are uh, if they add one delivery driver uh, what um, things they can do we can also look at their menu and suggest dishes that they should add that they don't have today or maybe Tell them well, or, you know, how the rank compare on the prices for a specific dish and say, well, mm -hmm. if, you, if you hive the price or if you move the price down, your profits will move this way or that way. So I think what machine learning does uh, is really to, to get the most value of the data, which in the past was in silos, right? So the platforms like OrderPad, what they do is they erase those silos because everybody goes through that. Um, the other thing that we're doing that benefits from machine learning is, is exactly that. That platform that we have today, we're opening up for startup and partners. So they can also in, uh, interface with the 60,000 restaurants that we have and connect with all the other ones through, through an API. And therefore, that also is a great way to remove those silos because then they can see some of the aggregated data, of course, with all the proper privacy concerns taken into account. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can also interact with the other partners. So it's really creating this platform uh, for the restaurants and that's why we are so keen on engaging with uh, uh, startups to grow the community because we know it's not a zero-sum game, right? Mm -hmm. So we are at the beginning of the disruption of food technology. And we see our role as a global leader to grow the ecosystem. And that's why we are super engaged and we have uh, accelerator programs and seed programs to, to help invest in the, in the community because we know that the more people we have like these folks, the more it's going to grow, the more the silos are going to be broken down and everybody will win, the consumers and the restaurant owners. And finally, on the, on the consumer side, to your point on mm. the phone. That would be my next question. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> what people order every week must be a huge trove of data. I mean, yeah. but obviously privacy comes into it, but what kind of granular data do you get out of the consumers? So to your point on your phone, we could basically um, personalise it. So when we know that you have similar interests to... Um, we can basically personalize it to recommend a specific dish in a restaurant or try things that people similar to you will like. Uh, so therefore, yes, the information we have can allow you to discover food much better, right? So uh, this idea of a lot of the people don't try food because they're afraid of, you know, I don't want to have a bad, bad experience. So we can do a lot to, um, to know that, you know, this dish in this restaurant is really good. People reorder it a lot. It's mm -hmm. great. We know that you're going to like it because you're a person like that. And we can recommend you uh, that dish to you, knowing that it, most likely, you know, you'll, you will enjoy it. As I said, I'm not from a technology background, just to caveat anything that comes out. Um, but, but since my CTO is not in the audience. Um, <laughs> um, so, like, one of the things um, for us, especially with um, as we try and scale, is we 
manage, so we have a say, support team that um, supports the relationships between the businesses and the charities that donate food. So when we first did our research, we found that one of the reasons that this wasn't happening was because it's difficult for um, a charity to consistently commit to collect food on time at the same time every day and if anything goes wrong the relationship can start to fall apart and things go wrong, volunteers cancel, car break down, things, different things can happen and the same for the store. So the um, platform is allowed to kind of streamline the communications between the businesses and the charities um, which helps them ensure that they have a very strong uh, relationship. And then it also tracks all of the data. So we know when a donation is posted, what is posted, what time is for collection, when the charity received the notification, when the charity accepted, when they arrived in the store. And we track this entire process. And I suppose for us, one of the areas that we see that we can continuously improve is um, we have a support team who look at the back of it. And our kind of aim is to maximise the amount of food that goes from a store to a charity, good edible food, where it won't, nothing, that's not good to eat. <laughs> um, but say one of the things we started doing recently is um, the support team monitor live donations and if there's an exception, so if there's a case that a charity receives a notification but they don't accept um, or they have to decline for whatever reason, um, we're trying to automate the process where we identify the next most likely charity to pick up which might sound kind of straightforward, but we're having um, kind of fun at the moment looking at the different variables that might come into that. So it could be like, how does the charity already pick up from that store? How frequently does the charity pick up? Have they accepted a do bonus donation in the past? So now we're trialling this, we're finding an alternative charity that you can forward the next message to. Um, so like that's kind of an, ex an example of how we're using the data that we currently have to try and make our processes um, more efficient ourselves um, and also maximise the amount of food that's being donated. And we've also started, um, which, I, uh, which kind of goes to the point around s seeing data differently for companies. Um, so say for Tesco in Ireland, we've just started trialling where we actually send them a list of their top 100 most donated products because there is an understanding that charities can't alone solve the food waste problem. There's definitely more food going to waste, especially in Ireland where we produce a lot of food for export, than the charity sector can handle. So we need to look at other ways to reduce this happening in the first place. So we've been able to show them um, in real time a list of the 100 top donated products so that if they see a trend that they can potentially then report that back into the operations teams and say, okay, maybe we should change our process and store to bake less bread because there's a consistent amount of bread that's being donated. So they're kind of two things that we're trying out at the moment now that we kind of have um, our system working and looking at the kind of new things that we can add on to constantly try and get more food um, to charities, but also hopefully prevent some of it happening in the first place. That's that's really good <coughs> idea of good practice there because you know the more they learn about waste themselves, they can cut costs, be better businesses that way. Yeah, and we also have a nice running joke in the team that we're going to turn everybody into robots because, <laughs> 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 um, because the, we want to continue to grow the amount of stores that are on, but obviously as efficiently as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so anyone who comes up with a way to turn their own role <laughs> into an automated uh, process wins a prize. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd say, let's call it augmentation. The robots aren't going to take our jobs, it's going to make us all better. That's no, the way no, exactly. No, it just frees up more time for people to look at problem solving and the creative sides of it as well so no it's a, we enjoy doing it <laughs> and Mikey um, yeah I think as I said already like the information is only as good as what's going in and then running businesses off exceptions to the norm is kind of where it's going when we we still see it now we're the kind of first piece of backhouse management technology going into some businesses, we're replacing paper, we're replacing scheduling, so our uh, spreadsheets. So the, the idea was to create something that was a, a better way of managing employees, managing their attendance, managing their scheduling. Um, and now that we've created that and businesses are using that, they've built up histories of previous weeks, months of scheduling, and they're starting to see behaviors. and. We're talking to customers now and we've given them kind of live attendance information for their managers. So you could be here in Dublin and check who clocked in in Toronto right now and you could be able to ring that person and communicate. But the idea to move all that to running your business off an exception. So if you don't hear anything, it's fine. 
but if something has happened or something moves or someone's not there, that that's when the system is starting to alert you. So we're working more on seeing where we can help business owners and managers run their businesses off the exceptions on Bazimply, but like it's only as good as the information that's coming in, we're looking at partnering with other systems like JustEed who are basically a <coughs> mine of information on the food customers are ordering and they're making recommendations to people saying if you drop the price on this dish you'll sell more, if you do more at this time, but that also has a back office effect as to how much staff you need. How, how much that's going to affect the, the base cost of your business. So when we start to look at it, if we're able to plug in to systems that have good curated information about the behaviors of the other sides of the business, we're able to layer it on top of your scheduling for next week. So we're going to put on an offer. We predict that uh, we're going to actually sell twice as much on Friday that we normally would. Well, then how does that look in the schedule? Who do we actually need to bring in? And I think we're starting to move towards, we've, we've built the basic tools that provide the information that wasn't there, but then we need to connect with other systems that are doing just as well a job in other areas of the business.